I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. My guest, Dan Meltzer, is a teacher and lecturer, a writer, a critic, and a sometime activist. His record shows he has a lot of opinions, and the charm is that we're going to be free to either agree or disagree. So let's listen and welcome Dan. Thank you. So basically, you're a communicator with all these different ways of expressing yourself. Uh, writing a play, writing a d novel. You've written a novel. I've written a novel. Short uh, stories. Many short stories, newspaper essays, columns, critics, essays, newspaper columns, criticism, television news, letters, um, <laughs> emails. Uh, so I think it, the only thing I've never written is a biography. Oh, actually. well, you ought to try that. Everything else. So, perhaps. Is it all communicating? Is it all telling people something? You know, it's, it's about expressing myself, and, and to, to be human is to express yourself. Uh, a friend of mine who was uh, the man who directed my first play, I was visiting them at their apartment one day and their baby was crying, a newborn baby, and uh, was really disrupting the dinner. And uh, he noticed that I was becoming distracted and he said, Dan, that child is doing what you do when you write a play. He's expressing himself. That's very good. That's so terrific. Yeah. To be human is to express yourself. Yeah. Which way do you have a favorite way of doing so? Uh, writing. Um, yeah. Essays, newspaper columns, uh, short stories, a favorite form, occasional plays. So the newspaper stories must reflect opinions. Yes, they're does, opinion columns. Does the play and the short stories, do they, are they opinionated also? In a more general sense, in a more existential sense, uh, uh, someone pointed out to me that much of what I write is about communications, about uh, the way people communicate or don't communicate or unable or miscommunicate with each other, which I think is a, a contemporary uh, issue. It, it definitely is. <laughs> yeah. um, let's, let's talk a little bit about the news reporting. Okay. You've done it for a newspaper. For, you've done it for... Uh, a citywide paper, right? Have you? I've written for uh, my my opinion columns have been in the in the uh, Newsday. Newsday. Uh, more recently, in the Villager, a very fine, uh, yeah, venerable paper, newspaper yeah. downtown. Uh, the West Sider. I was the editor of the West Sider and the Chelsea Clinton News uh, for a while, and I've written uh, many many columns for them, and currently for the Villager. Primarily. So it, there's a difference between local news and the citywide, the larger papers, right? And especially now, well, I'm not even sure now with the ownership because now there's a, one owner for quite a few of the local papers in New York. I'm a very strong advocate of local news reporting. I think it's, it's uh, inadequate in our daily papers, uh, certainly in the New York Times, I think, is, uh, is uh, derelict in its coverage of local news, very, very thin metro section, which, which bothers me somewhat. Right. Um, local television news is an entertainment primarily and a personality show. Um, the weekly papers uh, are a very strong and a very important source of news for communities. And everything is a community. New York is a community. East Coast is a community. Absolutely. Downtown is a community. So community reporting is, uh, is very, very important. What do you think is important about communities? Uh, their character. Uh, every community has a character. I was recently, recently watching a film, uh, an old film, a mu uh, Fanny, which is oh, uh, a right. romantic, right. A very, very touching romantic story. And I, and, I, and I noticed that what the film was about, as much as it was about these two young people and their tragic and disrupted love life, it was about community. It was about a small village, and not small, it was about a fishing community in the south of France in Marseille. And everybody was involved with everybody else's life and everybody cared about everybody else and so a, a problem of one person was a problem of the community and I'm very concerned with community I'm on my community board as, as you yeah, mentioned right. I've lived in the same community for a long time and uh, it's changing a, a great deal and so I, I think the sense of community maintaining community character uh, uh, relationships between and among people in a community is, is uh, very important. It's and very it's, important for people and for their soul, really, isn't it? It's that interdependence with people and interest in other people. I think it goes back to the, the cave yeah. days. You, you, but are, you, we you, running, uh, are we running in opposition to that concept now? I think so. The, uh, the neighborhoods, because of development, because of uh, the real estate market, people buying real estate right. uh, as much to hold on to it and sell it later, 
as, it, as they are to live there, creates a transient community so that you don't have people who are moving into a, a particular area because they want to stay there necessarily, but because it's a good buy and they may move up mm -hmm. someplace else. So there's a certain transience now. And other people have to move out. And other people have to move out. Right? The, so. the com but the use of the Internet, it's interesting because it both connects you to a lot of people in a lot of communities, but it really doesn't. It's a very individual kind of thing, isn't it? I mean, you sit in front of your They say it computer. creates a virtual community, but What's you look at each person, everybody's alone. It also yeah. creates alienation and solitude. Uh, you have to sit by your community, by your computer, yeah. to, to to feel like you're part of this virtual. So all of this community. is going counter to what you basically feel is part of a good life. <laughs> I, th I think uh, yeah. uh, I've I've been in smaller towns. I've lived in smaller towns uh, where there is sense of community. The, the downside of that is people say, it's "Well, everybody, everybody knows your business," <laughs> uh, and and it's 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 too close. But uh, when I first moved on to the Upper West Side, there was a, a strong sense of community and a, and a much uh, I think a greater diversity of population, right. uh, so that we uh, we knew each other. We spent more time talking to each right. other. Absolutely, Thirdly. but I've lived as far north as 93rd Street and as far south as 67th Street from uh, for a long time because I'm not young, and I could tell you the history of all the different stores and all the different things. And of course, now I live in the lower part of the district, which I think is the scene of the greatest change. Yes, and yes, I'm not happy yes, about it. Uh, it's very. Uh, it's, it's overdeveloped. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. It's it, uh, it too out of New York, kind of. It's too slick. <laughs> because it's, it's such an expensive place to live, uh, wealthier people live there now. Yeah. And so the retail picture reflects that. Mm -hmm. The more affordable restaurants are gone. The smaller right. stationers are gone. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the local drugstore is gone. You have chains and you have upscale shopping. And it's not really for us as much as it is for right. shoppers who right. come into the neighborhood. Right. So neighborhood. the traffic increases. Yeah. Uh, pedestrian traffic as well as uh, motor terrible. traffic. And, you know, the shopping is another question because we used to have really individual stores that had different characters and yes. had different yes. things. Now it's all changed. I mean, you can really go on the main street of almost any city and you see the same stores, right? It's true. And now yeah. that's what's happening to us, Columbus Avenue. It's all over. It's well, just, we do. We just lost a, a, a very important shop in our neighborhood, the Health Nuts, which was oh, right. the, the that nice place. little isolated uh, health food store. The same employees there for many years, same manager. We all knew them. Uh, it was a pleasure to shop there. They, to they, they advised you on things, and they, they knew us. And it's gone, and there was actually, it was gone because uh, the landlord wanted the space and could get much higher rent for it as, as with everything And they'd rather else. have empty stores, it seems to me, than fill, <laughs> fill them. Somehow they make it all back when yeah. they eventually do rent them. Yeah. I, I don't understand it, but that's the way it works. I've always had the fantasy. I always wanted to live in a small town on a street with beautiful trees. Now my daughter lives in Montclair, New Jersey, and they're all afraid of the big trees because they fall down in the storms, but I never oh. knew that when I was younger. Anyway. <laughs> and, when they were and then when you want to go to the movies, what do yeah. you do? <laughs> so what do you think about the community board? You've been on it for a year. It's community board seven, it's the very, west side. It's a great education for me. Uh, I'm learning... Uh, just by looking at the people on the board, who my neighbors are, and, and, and um, what we can do and what we cannot do, and there's much more that we cannot do than what we can do. A community board, as you know, is advisory. Uh, we uh, pass on various issues. I'm, I'm on the Land Use Committee and the Health and Human Services Committee. Land Use Committee big is, committee. <laughs> is a big committee, a lot of documents to read, all major developments, uh, change of zoning, uh, those issues, uh, dealing with high-rise buildings, dealing with uh, changes, of major changes in the community. And that's why I joined it, because I'm concerned about all the changes taking place in my community, and I wanted to have a voice. Do you feel as if you do have a voice? I do, I uh -huh. do. Um, I, am, uh, I, I tend to agree with my, my fellow committee members most of the time, uh -huh. but there are times I disagree. I just cast uh, a, uh, a vote. I, I, I asked for a... <laughs> Uh, a moratorium on the approval of sidewalk cafes because we're losing public space. When a new restaurant opens, it may be a large restaurant with a lot of interior space, and they want to have an outdoor cafe because it... They need it, though, financially, right? They, well, they business. say they need yeah. it financially, yeah. but public space is also important. <laughs> right. We are now, you have more pedestrians than ever. 
uh, and less sidewalk space right. than ever. And also, do you want to always be walking down the street watching somebody eating spaghetti in front of you? Uh, do you want to, <laughs> it, it, open space is yeah, important. Right. Yeah. Did, you, we, did you support congestion pricing, the uh, plan? I did not because I felt that it would have brought traffic to a certain place where everybody would want to park. In your neighborhood. And, in our neighborhood, and from there they would take. So but what about the concept? I mean, what are we gonna do about all the, you know, it's so bizarre, you, you, you travel a little bit, you go any place, all you see at rush hour and other times are lines of cars, highways that cross the over. The West Side Highway is, is a parking lot going up in the evening, coming down in the morning. Out to Long Island, or even out to Queens, out to New Jersey, it's, what is the future of the world going to be? You know, Ronnie, I don't think charging more money will discourage that the many travel. drivers. I think they will just pay it. The I gasoline think that, I think that history prices. has shown they will pay for the gas and they'll take off from something else. It doesn't, especially in our area, be where it's an affluent area. People who drive into New York are not on the lower end of the economic scale, so they'll pay it. Yeah, but and some I of them are. I mean, some of them drive into see. work, some of them, you know, but the whole thing about driving now is such a question which we really should learn something from with the price of gasoline and improve our mass transit in different ways of communicating. There has to be better mass oh, transit, it has better to be a train priority. service. Absolutely. Uh, the city should go into trolleys, I think, in certain areas, yeah. monorails. They, I used to go to high school this. on a trolley. So did I. Uh, did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. that old. I'm not to high school, but I, I, I rode trolleys. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Brooklyn. Oh. Uh, the Church Avenue trolley. Was, I used to go up uh, on Broadway. So let's talk about news, because okay. um, where do you get your news? Where do I? It, it's, it's not an easy question anymore. Um, I read the New York Times every morning. I listen to NPR, uh, neither of which is as satisfactory as they used to be. Um, I look online. I get certain news services uh, that I receive. I, I teach at New York University in the journalism department, so I get certain uh, feeds through the Internet. Um, you have to hunt. You have to be a proactive news consumer if these days. If you're not, how do you know what's going on in the world? You don't. Uh, you, what, you, what you know is what the government wants you to know through press releases and what the networks choose if you get your news from television, which is a very poor place uh, to get your news. Uh, I worked in television news uh, for many years. Has uh, it changed? Uh, yes. Uh, it's, more, it's, it's, it's never been the greatest place for news, but in the earlier days of television, it was, it was a wonder. I remember when, when television first came into our house when I was a child, and my grandmother and my parents would just, they would sit, they'd see live pictures of California right. and London and, right. and uh, something that had just happened. Well, they weren't live, though. They were in film. Well, they were. Were with, they? With the oh, famous coaxial had... cable. Oh, all right. That was later the, uh, than I, yeah. Across the continent. <laughs> um, and uh, news, I don't, th I don't think the news services were as intimidated by... Uh, you know, the government, uh, right. the, the administrations have learned how to manage journalism, number one. Number two, it's become extremely competitive. Uh, ratings are the most important issue in television news, certainly, where I watch. And I think in radio news as well, even affecting public radio. I think also they've become more entertainment than news. I mean, Absolutely. they're all magazine-type shows now. It used to be... Anchor people are really TV stars right. who are good reader, good-looking, good readers. Do they write their own stuff? Some of them do. Uh, a number of them don't. Do they pick I, their own material? To some extent. But there's, it's usually done by a committee, There's right? an executive producer in an evening newscast. There's a, there's a news meeting every morning at 11 o'clock or so for the evening newscast. Uh, there are, each uh, bureau sends in its, its, its picks of what they want to cover in a day. Uh, and they decide what the lead story is going to be, which is the biggest decision of the day, and which stories they will cover. If you, if you watch carefully, you will notice the first eight, perhaps ten minutes of most newscasts is news. The rest is, is off the shelf. Features, right. features. And the other thing that's changed is there are different bureaus. They have many fewer bureaus. Some of them don't seem to even have any operations, right? CBS used to have a bureau in Tokyo, oh, yeah. Cairo. Um, I remember when I was at CBS, uh, some, when uh, something happened in, in Cairo, you'd have to get a reporter from Europe onto a plane, get over there quickly. Now they, they all, they'll hire a stringer, someone who happens to be there, who has a cell phone to cover it. No, the bureaus were closed. 
Um, Money. It all became the bottom line expenditure. I mean, they used to be very proud of their news bureau, news operations. CBS was called the Tiffany Network. Right. I worked at CBS yes, in the 50s yes. when it first and started. Yes. It, it was an immensely important thing to be considered important. It became, you know, it's always been a business. When I first started working in television, somebody told me, don't have, there's no pie in the sky. This is a business. And it was. It, it was. it was more entertaining, I think, in those days. It was more variety of programming. Certainly drama, which is a, of great interest to me. There was serious drama It was live, TV. too. Rod Studio Serling wrote One. wonderful plays right. for television. When I was at CBS Studio One, Playhouse 90, yes. all live, yes. right? Yes, live yeah. television. Yeah. yeah, people running from but set But of course, you know, part of that also was a difference in the way they financed the, the network. I mean, they didn't sell spots. They had one sponsor for a whole program. You would have uh, the so Lux you, Radio of the Air, right. which so was the radio. Or, or, Alcoa yes. Theater, yes. Yes. that kind of thing. Yes, the and I think there was more commercial time now. I don't watch oh, commercial I think so. television. I, commercials are longer and there are more of them. Yeah, that's more more commercials than there is content of and a And you can always tell <laughs> what audience the sponsor or, or the network is after by what the what the commercials are. <laughs> you know, if if it's household products, they're after you know housewives. Yeah. If it's uh, med if it's Medicine, medications, you know, oh God, uh, for, in, yeah, right. for this or the, right. all these various personal issues, you know, it's an older. So audience. where does cable fit in? Cable was the alternative. Uh, I think, you know, Ted Turner did a wonderful thing when he created CNN, CNN and Turner Classic Movies and so on. Um, it's become more imitative of the networks, I believe. It's, uh, it's very, it looks like commercial news. On a day when there is a major story happening, uh, a catastrophe someplace, a major political event, Cable news would be the place to go because they have the cameras there first. I don't think the commentary is particularly perceptive. Mm -hmm. I think that it's what c cable news, like commercial news, is selling itself. And mm -hmm. they're competing. Uh, the, these very voluble anchors, the, uh, <laughs> the, the personality, they're selling personalities. More and more. What I've noticed is also when there's something happening, if there's a police chase in Los Angeles, if it's during the day, yes. the cable networks will cover it forever. It's a fad. And Car just, chases yeah. are in ever right. since the right. O.J. Simpson, Simpson and the and White Bronco. That. But let's talk about or politics. fights. Yeah. Now, now it's it's kids having fights. They're the oh, is that kids, well, it's gang kids with cell phones. Fact. Uh, two girls beating them. I, I saw, yeah, I, oh, I, that's right. They take I, the film. I, I watched one of the networks. <clears throat> I, 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 don't remember, I, won't, I think I remember which one it was, but I won't say it. And uh, the anchor person interviewed it saying, well, we, we really are you know, almost uncomfortable showing this to you, but they did show it to us. And it was just two teenage girls beating each other up. On somebody's, on, 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 from somebody's on, phone. From somebody's cell phone. And then um, MB, MSNBC has really pegged its coverage now to the political uh, candidate, the yeah, race, yes. and, and CNN to a great extent also. So now you have all these, all these interpreters. I mean, they have to fill a lot of time. <laughs> so they've got all these panels of experts, but we don't even know who most of those experts are or where they are or if they're experts at all. You're listening to these opinions. Right. Well, what's that's their resume? Crazy. What's their credential? Uh, oh, it, it's, arguments are big, you know, ever since, uh, was it, not firing line, but there was a... Yeah. Uh, there are a number of these so-called panel shows, which are really about arguing because it's about conflict yeah. and combat, and, that makes and news, it's more about drama says. than it is yeah. about news. Yeah. So, what do you teach students? I teach them to tell the truth, to get get the correct information, and uh, when I'm teaching uh, news writing or reporting, is to uh, always have two sources, at least two sources for information. You cannot say something happened unless you saw it happen. Do you, have to have a, do you have to have, can you say reliable source, or do you have to I don't say, like that. identify I don't, I don't the like person? That. I, I, I would identify. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm from the older school, right. which says, uh, if you're saying according to, say according to whom. Don't say according to sources. I want to know who those sources are. It's more are. and more, though, not that. And, and it's also become more difficult uh, to get, for sources. Report, to get right. sources, because uh, now reporters can be subpoenaed to reveal their sources. Right. Uh, which intimidates the sources and makes it more difficult for reporters to report. Is there more spin now than there used to be? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's become a whole big profession. It's hard also. to know what's real yeah. and what's true. Right. 
Yeah. And too many people take what's been said to them as the fact. And the the do the, they go out to look at what they're reporting, or do they go to the internet? Um, it depends on what they're reporting. If it's if, if they're quoting, and and it's already happened, uh, then they have to use the internet or telephone interviews. Telephone is a very important tool to actually talk right. to someone and, and get. I know in my house. Tell you something. I, I you know my husband was a former reporter, and you're not supposed to say who is this <laughs> when you may I ask who's calling because it's from the old days in the newsroom. If he got a call from somebody who wanted to tell him something, he didn't want to identify himself, so they'd hang up if you said, can you please tell me who's calling? <laughs> I've had calls from people with information who say, it's a friend. Uh, that's good. Right. Okay, but, but you have to be very careful how you quote right. that source. Right. Uh, and then I've noticed that reporters, they don't seem to go out as much as they used to. I mean, that's part, you lose the verb in reporting, don't you? There are fewer reporters, and perhaps they don't go out as often. I don't, I'm, I'm not a, a, a consumer of television news, mm. necessarily. I, I do watch it periodically, just to see what's being done and how it's being done. Um, I just noticed a lot of feature reporting, a lot of, mm -hmm. of stories that are That fits covered into the magazine. And, and they, they, yeah. they go in that second two-thirds of the newscast. It may have happened yesterday, it may have right. happened last week. Right. So are you, do you have a play in production? Are you writing a play? What I are you doing? I have two plays looking for production. They're both comedies. A Cable from Gibraltar, which is a romantic comedy. That's a nice name. Uh, covering, uh, which uh, traces the relationship of two people who both know and do not know each other over the course of 90 years. <laughs> and uh, the other is a play called What Comes After Ohio, which takes place during the Great Depression. And it's about uh, two men uh, on their way to the West Coast, their clothing salesmen. And uh, they think they know how to dress the stars. And they're going <laughs> to make it big in Hollywood. So where do you get these ideas? Where do you get ideas? That's, they come out of the air. <laughs> <laughs> Things you hear people say, uh, I think the ideas are in you all the time. They're just waiting to be... Activated. You listen to conversations as much as you can. I, I hear what people say. I, 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 uh, I follow the way people talk to each other. Not so much what they're saying, but the ways in which they communicate or don't communicate. When you're in a restaurant, are you looking around? I'm listening. 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 Uh, every once in a while, you hear somebody say something interesting. I, I wrote a short story uh, called People a number of years ago. Uh, which went on to, to win, a, win a prize, a Henry Prize. And it's about the use of the word people. My people will call your people yeah. and so on. And, and I, I, f I just took a I sense. I read that story. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, right. Well, it, it, it told me sense, about yeah. how people, I mean, people is about human being, about flesh, yeah. soul, spirit, yeah. ideas, right. heart. But it's used as a commodity, my people, as though you could actually have That's the people that belong to you. Right. So oh, definitely. It's a dehumanizing. Well, I always feel effect. that way about politicians who talk about, uh, you know, my, I don't know what, anything with my. It's my, not my, theirs, right. right? It's not. I'm not anybody's Nothing. people. You're exactly, not anybody's people. Exactly. And you don't own everything either. But it, is it, it, it hard gives them to clout. publish short stories? Where do short stories get published? It is. It's um, <clears throat> literary journals. <clears throat> there are very few magazines um, they used to these carry. days that yeah. publish fiction. The New Yorker, I think you, you can count them on one hand. The New Yorker, The Atlantic, Harper's. The Atlantic no longer publishes fiction. Huh. I correct myself. The New Yorker's, Harper's, um, I think Esquire, Playboy, Playboy is a good, good venue yeah. for... Playboy uh, is very interesting with its content. It's yes. written content. Good interviews. Right. Yeah. Good, yeah. good writers, everything it good, is. except it for is. the pictures that then it's, make it, the everybody... Pictures are, <laughs> the women are young, but, but the pictures are old, if Jimmy you know what I mean. A, Jimmy <laughs> did some articles for Playboy, and there's a kid in our building who's about 13, and he said to Jimmy one day, I saw your article, and it was in Playboy, and he, got, oh, he couldn't <laughs> believe it. Him. Right. And what about play production? That, I mean, is this all cost? <clears throat> is it all cost-related that... that Magazines are worried about. I don't know why magazines, but what about getting a play produced? Getting a play produced, it's uh, it's just like fiction. It's a proactive business. You submit plays to theaters, and you wait. It gets read by an intern. If the intern likes it, they pass it on to the assistant or um, creative director, uh, and so on. I'm working with a director now who uh, likes these two plays and wants to do them. We've had readings. Uh, we've had some interest. We've had some potential investor interest, but it's very expensive to produce plays. 
most uh, I know about this, the most expensive issues uh, for producing plays are the rental of the theater right. and, the act and the publicity. Right. It's Actors are wonderful. Yeah. Uh, because they like to so act. They like talented, to work. Yeah. There are so many talented actors in New York, many yeah. of whom you may never see, right. looking for work. Um, it's, and it's, it's, it's about real estate. The theaters are more expensive to rent. Right. Um, do you ha as a writer, do you have to find the investors? Or you have to find a producer who, along with you, will look for money. What do you have to? If you find a theater company, they pay for it. You've written something, whether it's a play, a short story. It's up to you to find a publisher, a producer, a director, maybe an actor who would like to do it. So I, uh, I'm proactive. I seek producers. I seek directors. Uh, an actor. If I know it, if I find a way to a certain actor, actors are very well protected. But if you yes. have a connection, somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who plays dominoes with the doorman <laughs> of this one's so and so, uh, use connections. You can find and, it. and I know, and, and I do know. Well, so. I'm glad I found you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you found me too. Conversation is over. Oh. It, it goes so quickly, doesn't it? Time flies when you yeah, have a good time. Yeah, it does. But thank you very much, Daniel Meltzer. <laughs> My pleasure. And I hope that we can see your play soon. I hope so, too. And read your article, read your stories in the magazines. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.